What's up plant lovers, Devin is here and look how beautiful my rose is blooming right now. We're in early summertime in my garden here in Eastern Pennsylvania, zone 6B. But as you can see, while I have some flowers that are just getting started, I have others that are fading away. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing how to correctly deadhead our rose bushes so that they can continue to produce new flowers all summer long. Now in today's gardening world, most modern rose shrubs have the ability to bloom new flowers over the course of a few months. However, in order to allow that to happen, you do need to deadhead them correctly and on a regular basis. There's really two main things that you need to be aware of when deadheading your roses, and we'll get into that here in a second. Now, the reason why we wanna deadhead our roses is because as we remove the old flowers, it actually makes way and provides enough energy for our roses to create new flowers. The other reason why we wanna deadhead our roses is because if we do not remove those spent flowers, what happens is that they will start to create what are called rose hips, which many of us are familiar with. However, if we allow our roses to go into that rose hip producing stage in the early summertime, it's a signal to our rose shrub to stop producing more flowers. So for that exact reason, we wanna remove spent flowers as soon as possible so that it doesn't go into that seed developing stage. Now that being said, once our summer season has finished, we can absolutely allow our old flowers to remain on, on their plant so that they can produce those rose hips at the end of the season. We don't really want them in June, July, or August, more like September, October time. All right, so let me show you guys the two techniques needed to correctly deadhead our roses. Now the first technique is very simple and pretty self-explanatory. Here you can see a nice cluster of four flowers, one, two, one bud just opening and one that's finished. And when you come to a situation like this, all that you need to do is find the one that has finished, travel down that short stem right here and simply cut it just like this, removing it from the stem. Now the second technique occurs when all of the flowers on a single cluster have finished. Instead of simply removing that small section of stem like we did before, we're actually gonna be removing a little bit more of a substantial part of this thicker, larger stem. Now the reason we do that is it's, for one, going to keep our plant looking tidier and neater, but it's also, if done early enough in the season, going to allow for new growth to emanate from where we cut so that your plant can then go forth and create even more flowers. So let me show you exactly where you want to cut along this stem. Now once you've located the correct stem, you travel down that stem until you find the place where the first set of five leaflets is occurring, as you can see right here. All of the leaf sections above have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you wanna travel down to where there have five stems. You're going to take your nice sharp shears just above that set of five leaflets, and you're gonna make a nice clean incision with those sharp shears at a slight angle, just like that. Alternatively, if you have a stem that has just one old flower, instead of being in a cluster, we'll do the same technique, traveling down that stem until we find the first set of five leaflets, which would be right here. And then we will make that incision accordingly. Another one would be right here, just like that. Just like that. And just like that. And by engaging in these techniques about once a week throughout the growing season, you can ensure that your plant will remain staying healthy and have the ability to continue to produce more and more beautiful roses. If you do have any further questions, comments, tips, or experiences growing roses yourself, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below so that we can encourage our growing garden community to learn from one another. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you real soon. Ciao.